live this morning and we want to welcome you to our 10th day of Bible boot camp. We have reached our 10th day of Bible boot camp and we know that God is with us this very morning. So wake up and stretch your spiritual muscles and be a part of this worship experience where God is about to do something in your life today. We're so grateful that we have this opportunity of waking up and seeing another day. We're so glad that we have this opportunity of being in revival and we believe right now that we are in revival and we believe that God is going to just strengthen us today because he's just such a marvelous God and he wants us to be a marvelous people. So this morning we ask you to just simply allow God to be that individual in our lives that can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. So this morning we invite you to invite God in our lives. We are now in revival. So let's bow our heads together as we look to God, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for life and we thank you for strength and the opportunity of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And this morning, we just want to pause just to say thank you for being a great God to us. And as we are up rolling on this 10th day of Bible boot camp, we say to you, Lord, that we love you. And we appreciate you. So bless us this very morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And so again, we want to welcome you to our 10th day of Bible Boot Camp. And we believe that God is going to do some, some great things in our lives. So this morning, you're up. You're awake. And you got plans today. The question is, what plans do you have that involves God? What plans do you have that involves God? And I hope that we're involving God in our plans. You know, today I want to talk about a specific subject concerning making sure we put God first, making sure that he is that priority in our lives. And so this morning, we believe that God ought to be a priority in our lives. He's got to come first in our lives, not second, not third, unless you're dealing with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But in light of that, we want to put God first. We're in asking you also to invite others, invite others to be a part of this worship experience because we want you to know that God wants uh, even your friends, your relatives, your neighbors to be involved in something that's going to strengthen them some way, somehow. So this morning, we want you to start with God. That's it. We want you to start with God. Start with God who can do all things for us. Mornings are better. God first. I want to share a beautiful song with you, right? It's a beautiful song that I, I just love so much. It's a song by uh, Dara Coley, uh, one, one of the greats, one of the greats. But before we listen to a beautiful song uh, sung by him, I have a question to ask. What are your plans today? That's it. You mind sharing with us what your plans? Tell us one thing that's on your docket for the day because we want to we want to pray about your docket we want to pray about the plans that's on your docket today just name one thing that's on your docket today uh, just a, a, so we can pray for and as you do that i want you to listen to this song by daryl coley remember write it down what's on your docket today what's one plan that you have today so that we can pray for you to to just be amazing in that plan today Let's listen to this, let's marinate on this, and let's share with each other so that we can pray for each other. Is Christ and to die again to suffer with him I know that. I shall reign in his arms over there in that land right and fair to live is Christ 
it just means gain to suffer with him and to feel his pain to carry my cross is the reason why he came to to save my soul and to make me To live is Christ, but to die is gain. Today, we're going to gain. Today, we're going to gain, not die. We're going to die to our sins. We're going to die to our stuff. But today, we're going to gain. And I'm looking at some of our, uh, our daily tasks for the day. Daily tasks, such as teaching leaders for tomorrow, checking, um, checking to go to the detention center to speak to the kids in the detention center. We're looking at plans such as uh, drum corps and drill team practices and and work and plans of meeting staffs and you know and and wow I'm just I'm looking at all these tasks that people are coming up with, but why have these tasks without Christ? 
And so today, we want you to do all of these tasks well, but with Christ. And I believe that God is going to do uh, even greater things with the task. And that's just one task. So imagine the rest of the task that God has for us. You know, today we want to talk a little bit about putting him first in your life. So if you're going to put him first in your life, it is so important to know exactly what God needs and what he wants from each one of us. And what God wants from us right now is for each one of us to take him from the bottom of the list, from the middle of the list, and put him first on the list. I believe that God wants us to put him first. In this, I want to share a special text with you this morning. A special text uh, that gives us an understanding of what God is looking for in our lives. And so as we get together right now, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 20 or just marinate on this on this text. Because when we look at this text, we recognize and know that God wants us to follow him and him alone. Let's look at this text together. First of all, the word tells us, and God, whoa, let's pray. Now, Father, we want to thank you for your word that you're about to give. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's look at this. The word of God tells us, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not bear unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that's in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of, of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercies unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. First of all, in order for us to put God first, we have to remember what he's asking us to do. Every day he's giving us a word. That's why we got to be in our word every day. Every day he's telling us time after time again that he wants us to be in his word. And so the word I'm sharing with you this morning is his commands. We've got to follow his commands. In, in the Bible says, straight off the text says, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So he's number one, first thing he's saying is he presents himself. And he presents himself saying that I am the Lord your God. That's the first thing he does. He introduces himself. I am the Lord your God. And then he says that he, he wants you to have no other gods before me. That's what he says. I'm the Lord your God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Then he goes as far as to say, Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in the heavens above, that's in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. He says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God. That's where we're stopping right there. He says, I am a jealous God. And he has the right to be jealous because he woke you up this morning. He has the right to want to be in your life because he made you. He has the right to want to be first in your life because he cares about you. Because he loves you more than we even love ourselves. And God is telling us right now that this is who I am. I'm the Lord your God. He says, uh, I, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. This is what I've done for you. And number three, he says, I want you to have no other gods before me. I want to come first. He wants to be first in your life. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be first in he, 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 wanting someone to be first in our lives. He says, thou shalt not make us to be any graven image. I don't care if it's your car. I don't care if it's your house. I don't care if it's your spouse. I don't care if it's the food you like. Nothing comes first. Don't bow down yourself to them. Don't serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God. He says, they won't keep my commandments. But if you keep my commandments, I'm going to show mercy to thousands of them that love me. So God is saying today, that with all the stuff you've got to do today, put him first. With all the stuff that you have, put him first. With all the stuff you're worried about, put him first. Because if you're worried about stuff, right, then that's going to become your God. If you're worried about all the stuff you got to do today before him, then all the things you got to do today becomes your God. If you're stressed about something, that becomes your God. 
And I'm telling you right now that God wants you to know that he wants top billing. He wants to be uh, to be number one. He wants to hold high priority in your lives. So what he's basically saying is every task you got to do today, put what he wants first and everything will fall into place. You see, this month we're talking about being revived, right? We're talking revival. We're talking about being that man, being that woman on fire. But we can't be that individual on fire unless we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. We put God first and we recognize that it's all about him. That's it. It's all about him. And this very morning, we recognize that it's got to be all about him. So what is God saying? He's saying, put me first today. What is he saying? He's saying there should be no other gods before me. Your bills, none of these things come before him. Your relationships does not come before him. Your schoolwork does not come before him. All relationships are put on pause for Jesus Christ. And when we look at that text again, that text really takes us to a place where God is saying, Hey, it's about me and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord, your God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage to be any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in the heavens above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them for I, the Lord, thy God. He says, I'm a jealous God. That's it. He's a jealous God, and he has the right to be jealous. Yes, he does. And the Bible also says, watch this now, that, that you should not bow down yourself to them. Don't serve them. Don't serve them. Don't serve anyone. Serve only him. Don't serve your boss. Serve him. It's all about God. That's it. It's all about God. Right now, I want to share a beautiful song with you, a beautiful song, and then we'll go into our prayer. But this song, it, it, it tells us that, um, that it's all about God, and it's all about our relationship with him. And it's a beautiful song that tells us, uh, that says that you have owned the very fact that God is a part of your life. This song is called, Oh God of Mine. So as you listen to this, let's get ready for prayer, Oh God of Mine. Oh God of mine, I'll have no idols. Oh God of mine, come lead the way. Oh God of mine, I'm greatly humbled. This sinner's heart, you came to save. Display. 
for prayer. And we believe that God can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. So begin to write down your prayer request at this time. And as you write down your prayer request, know that God still cares and he still answers prayers. Remember, all of the tasks that you need to do today, put God first, pray about it, and watch him explode in your lives. Because not only are you in revival, but the people that you come in contact with should be in revival too, based on the life that you're living. We are in revival. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for God that God will do for us everything that we're asking. And if not, let's have the patience to wait. So let's bow our heads together as we look to God in prayer. Father, again, we come before you, first of all, thanking you for being a great God to us, an awesome God to us, a God that can do all things, a God can, that can help us in all things. And this morning, we simply come to you because we recognize that it's only you that can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. We read in your word that you want to be first in our lives. We read in your word that it's all about you. And so this morning, we simply want to thank you for being that kind of God that can help us in all things. We're asking you right now, Lord, that you will continue to rest and abide with us, continue to be with us, continue to walk with us. This morning, Lord, we, we just... We just want to thank you. Looking at all these names, we want to thank you. And all these names are just basically saying that that there are those who are have birthdays and there are those who have health issues and there are those who are dealing with, uh, you know, their... to bless every individual in this place we're asking you to strengthen us we're asking you for just a double portion of your holy spirit the individual that's praying for uh just a, a an extra dose of your spirit because they're dealing with some issues someone lost their mother someone is dealing with a suicide this morning someone is dealing with being attacked by the enemy 
uh, someone has plans today, Lord, to uh, be great. Someone has plans to put you first today. And we're asking you in a special way that your Holy Spirit will continue to rest and abide with them. We're asking you, Lord, for a positive spirit, Lord. We're asking you to help us, Lord, as we, as we look to you who will help us to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. We're asking you, Lord, in a special way that you be with our, our children. You will be with their mothers. We'll be with uh, us that we will not have a stressful day. We're looking at all of these prayer requests, and there's so many of them, Lord, that even reading them is difficult enough. But we're pausing right now to say we want to put you first. We want to make you a priority. We want to make your word a priority. And today, Lord, before we make another step, we want to just simply say that we acknowledge that you are the God of our lives. We acknowledge, Lord, that you have brought us out of issues. And we acknowledge that you don't want to have no one to come before you. Today, we give you our lives. Today, we start again with you. So bless us, strengthen us. And all these prayer requests, Lord, that I can't even look at right now, I can't even read it right now. Please honor them according to your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we want to thank you for joining us on our 10th day of Bible Boot Camp. Wow, so many prayer requests have just come in. In light of this, we just want you to know that God will answer your prayers and God still expects for us to be in revival. Listen, I'm going to ask you to do the old servant a favor. Share uh, the... Uh, uh, the word of the day with someone and share the rebroadcast also either on Facebook share it either, either on Facebook or uh, or bring someone to uh, our, our site Full Circle TV which is pastorprogram.com just don't keep it to yourself share it with others I want to give you the word of the day and the word of the day simply is you must have no other gods before me you must not have any other god but me. That's what it said, Exodus 20, verse 3. One more time. You must not have any other God but me. And so we want you to share that with someone, share that with others, and know that God wants to come first in your life. So today, be blessed. Walk with him. Be strengthened and be blessed. Today, be revived with him.